ever imagine like cruising at 199 miles an hour? Whoa. Yeah, in a car that costs, you know, more than most houses. Yeah. I mean, that's the Maserati, Gran Turismo, and Gran Cabrio, right? Right. But um, recently, these luxury cars, they uh, they hit a roadblock, a recall. Okay. And before you think, oh, just another recall, this one's a bit different. Interesting. Yeah, so we're diving into a kind of a hidden danger, I guess you could say, in our cars. What happens when the fuel gauge shows plenty of gas, but your tank is actually empty? It's a scary thought, and, and it highlights this growing trend in the car industry. Yeah. We tend to... You know, think about recalls as like mechanical issues. Right. But we're seeing more and more software problems. Yeah. Even in these really high end vehicles. Okay. So let's unpack this Maserati thing. Yeah. So the Maserati Gran Turismo and Gran Cabrio, over 500 of them are experiencing this fuel gauge glitch. Wow. So imagine you're like flying down the highway, you know, you just dropped like $158,000 at least on this car. Right. And then all of a sudden you're stranded because of like a software error. Yeah. It's like something out of a movie. Yeah, it really is. So at the heart of it all, it's the car's body control module. Okay. The BCM. It's like the central computer system of the car. Okay. And in this case, there's a glitch in software of the BCM that's causing the fuel gauge to you know, show the wrong amount. Yeah, and it could be really dangerous, especially at those speeds. Right. Running out of gas at 199 miles an hour, that's... That's life or death. Dude. That's just like, oh, I need to pull over. It makes you wonder how something like that even happens, you know, especially with a luxury brand. You'd think they would have caught that. Right. And that's where the investigation gets interesting, right? Mm. So a Maserati owner actually ran out of gas, but his gauge was showing a quarter tank. Whoa. Yeah, that set off alarm bells, obviously. Right. Maserati and their supplier, Continental Automotive Systems, they had to dig deeper and they found more field reports warranty claims, customer assistance records, mm -hmm. all pointing to the same problem. So what's a field report? Like, how do they even collect that? So field reports are like, think of a mechanic, they look at a car, mm -hmm. and they write down anything that's unusual, error codes, any performance issues they find. Gotcha. Those reports, along with you know the claims and the customer service stuff, it all creates a trail that helps them figure out if there are any big problems. So these reports showed a pattern with the fuel gauge. Unfortunately, yes. And you mentioned earlier that this isn't just a Maserati problem. Right. It's the whole industry. It's a bigger conversation. We should probably talk more about that. Yeah, yeah this whole Maserati thing, it really shows a problem we're seeing more and more. Like across the board? Yeah, the whole car industry. Huh. As cars rely more and more on software, right. the chance of something going wrong with that software also goes up. It's like we're at this weird point. Yeah. Cars used to be, you know, mostly mechanical. Right. But now they're like, I don't know, computers on wheels, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And just like any computer, they can have glitches, bugs, totally. even get hacked, right? Exactly. And the software is only going to get more complicated. I guess so. It's everything. Driver assistance systems, the entertainment stuff. Right. Thousands of lines of code. Right. And more code means more chances for something to go wrong. So what does that mean for safety? I mean, if Maserati has these problems, right. what about all the other companies? It means that testing the software is super important. Okay. Like really, really important. Yeah. They have to make sure that the software is solid, mm. that it can handle anything. They need to test it in all kinds of situations, simulations, real world driving. Make sure it actually works, yeah. Yes. Yeah before those cars end up on the road. Okay, so testing is key, but what about like updates? Oh yeah. But so like, let's say they find a problem after the car's already been sold. Right. What so then? That's where these over-the-air software updates are huge. Okay. It's becoming more and more common, which is good. So they can fix stuff remotely. Exactly. Address any issues, even make the car perform better. Think of it like oh. updating your phone, you know? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. At least there's a way to fix it. But what about the driver? You said earlier that a Maserati owner found the problem. Should people be looking for these problems in their cars? That's a great question. And yeah, I think drivers are important here. They're the ones driving the car every day. They notice if something feels off. Right. Like if the car's acting weird or warning lights are going off for no reason. Yeah. Anything like that, report it. Tell your dealer. Tell the company directly. So we're all beta testers now. Kind of, yeah. yeah. But seriously, those reports really help the companies find and fix these problems. Okay. It's way better to catch these things early on. Right, right. 
So we talked about software testing updates, but let's go back to the Maserati recall. What are they doing about it? They're doing a software update to recalibrate the fuel sensors. They want to notify all the owners by late October, and then they can bring their cars to the dealer for the update. Okay, so that's good news for Maserati owners. Mm -hmm. But this whole thing makes you wonder, how did they not catch this earlier? Right, before the cars were even sold. Yeah. Well, these cars are pretty new. They only started making them last November. Okay. But it makes you think, maybe they didn't test it enough. Or maybe they were rushing to get the cars out there. It's hard to say, but these are important questions. Yeah. Especially now with all this new technology in cars. It's like you can have all this technology, but humans can still mess things up. Which makes me think, with all these software problems, right. is it the driver's fault if something goes wrong? or the company's fault? It's a tough question. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, especially with self-driving cars and all that. It gets kind of blurry. Totally. Yeah, it's going to be wild. But um, before we go full on sci-fi future, right. let's get back to the Maserati recall. Okay, yeah. So if anyone's listening to this and they're like, wait a minute, is my Maserati messed up? Right. You can go to the NHTSA website. Oh. It's nhtsa.gov. And you plug in your VIN, your vehicle identification number. Gotcha. And that'll tell you if your car is part of the recall. Good to know. Always good to check, <laughs> right? <laughs> but this whole thing, it really makes you think, like, about the big picture of, you know, where we're at with cars. What are your, like, big takeaways from all this? I think it shows that even these luxury brands, yeah. the ones that are supposed to be, you know, really well made. Right. They're not immune to these software problems. Right. They got to make sure the software is good, that they can update it, and that they find problems quickly. What about people who are buying new cars? Any advice? Oh, yeah. Ask questions. Okay. Lots of questions. Don't be afraid to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. You know, right. figure out the software. Ask about updates, cybersecurity. Don't just assume everything's going to be fine. Exactly. You got to <laughs> be informed. Good advice. Well, I think we've given everyone a lot to think about today. Yeah. So next time you're driving, you know, maybe ease up on the gas a little. And remember, it's not just the engine you got to worry about anymore. It's the code. It's a whole new world. That's right. Until next time.